Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for hanging out this late in the day. I'm trying to get a drink or chat with folks. This is strong, so I'm so happy to see you all here. I'm Will. My title is a bit ridiculous. Policy and state basically means I'm all your libraries and I get to do all the fun things. So I'm super excited to be here for the fun open stuff and stuff. All your Thank you for being here with me. I'm speaking on behalf of a, a really, really great team of people here. Um, and I wanted to, to take some time to talk a little bit about the work that, that we all have been doing to support open educational practices and to develop some training resources um, that have helped other people do that work. That buzzword, open sure educational practices, I bet it's one you've heard a lot. So I'm just very quickly going to say what I mean when I talk about that stuff. I spend most of the time talking a little bit about our work. Hopefully, having some time for some questions, discussion as well. Um, in the sense that everything old is new again, I saw this cartoon and made me smile a little bit. We're talking about not just centering the textbook, but thinking about the other ways that we teach each other and learn from each other. And I really love this. We want you as a brother, not as a thing. The textbook has a place, it can be very important, but of course, there are other ways to go and get to see in front of a textbook. Mm -hmm. For all the citations I'm going to throw at you and, and perhaps and whatever else, this probably does as good a job as anything talking about what we're excited about, which is the sense of changing the way that we think about and teaching and learning. Um, so one obvious way is that if you're talking about an open resource, and I think we sort of that that by our permission comes with the means of just a few things, so it's a textbook that we can distribute, we mix, provide that sort of thing. You all know this, I've seen guys, or even if this is something that you all have seen. Like, open educational practices as, if nothing else, at least open and legal practices, the stuff you can do in research and legal practices. But more than that, when, when we've been talking about open educational practices, you know, kind of cheaper, this idea of recentering the connection, whether we're talking about a book, or we're talking about a lesson plan, or a syllabus, whatever sort of piece of the process and product, the real thing we want to be talking about tools to facilitate connection, tools to develop, and tools to create a more authentic, inclusive, and exciting brand of education and all of this. That's, so that's the, that's the piece that I want you to really take away. If you've heard me talk in the past, you've seen me talk about this way. Two-step dance, access-oriented, learner-driven education, access-oriented being equitable, not just one size fits all. Everybody who takes up the education is just like me, and so we should have educational resources that incorporate well into the And the way we do that is through this further thinking model, right? More than the intellectual studies, more than the throwaway assignment. Instead, an invitation to create, to bring your own lived experiences into the classroom, to engage with one another, human to human. This is the way we've always do it. So I'll say a thing and you say it back to me, and I'll like, may I live to bring you all that stuff. Those conversations have gotten us really excited about thinking about how to frame conversations around justice and inclusion in this work in a different way. Um, so this Lambert's framework, you might be familiar with this one we sort of keep coming back to a lot. Um, it's an open textbook that you're already doing useful for justice, you know, equitable access to course materials and capability that's critical for teachers to participate fully, to not be behind the ball in terms of joining in the classes itself. That's critical in terms of Graduation and stuff our institutions care about. Um, when you have that five R open textbook, you can move down how to the justice piece of it. You can start to say, hey, one, one size fits all textbook is right for everybody. If I'm teaching uh, students in a particular part of the world, they might not want to see a textbook that just looks bland and sort of like nobody as well. I mean, you see, um, the, you have some folks in Canada called oh, Canada, Ontario, in Canada eyes. Very U.S. based models, and they say, "Well, we don't really use that currency, and those place names don't mean anything to us. So let's make something that's really meaningful for those non class right? To be properly justice. And then, as you move into the practices stuff, the pedagogy stuff, you can really get into that question of justice conversation. How we construct and use I can do better than one size fits all. I can guess what my students do. They know that we need to do If I want to have a really work that's meaningful. Make a pretty good guess of what they might or might not be interested in. Say the assignment is to learn this thing or to demonstrate the skill. What part of the world has you as something that you can 
creating the boundaries. We want to think about creating something new. Let's create something that's meaningful. That takes you sort of all the way down to the true representational. A different way to think about that is with this picture here. You can think about free as moving along the financial equity side of things and inclusive, student driven, um, you know, those sorts of things moving up to that side. And this is the stuff where it is something about the practices that we have. Well, so that's the sort of thing we talk about. We talk about and the good news is there are already a lot of people who do this. That's the big thing. I've handed some of these tools at some point in the past, right? Um, if you've never looked at the OpenTech document, that's really nice place to be. This book is incredible. Um, some folks who were presenting earlier, it was roadmapped to you. You make one person, a small group, and ask <laughs> that conversation. How does this fit into our world? There are some really good resources out there. And we also have some pretty nice institutional models for supporting this stuff as well. Uh, this morning I talked about this computer incubator that I'm really, really excited about. Um, that's really, really cool. So we can run some things called the Knowledge Center. So I don't think it's really knowledge fellowship. It's super exciting for me. Um, nice with these institutions support this work as well. But what we haven't found so far, the gap that we see, the opportunity that we saw, is how do we develop a training program? Um, there are incredible training programs if you want to be an OER writer, or if you want to be a leader in the open education. But the programs that say we really want to focus explicitly on changing curriculum in a way that centers justice, and that, that it's very much grounded in this idea of partnership and community making rather than just I'm going to be excellent, we're going to work together. That's a space that we saw an opportunity to develop some resources around. That's what I want to talk to you about now is this certificate. Friends. So the first thing we did, we're going to talk a big game about community and shared authority and co-creation, just to not just have one person who's not going to program that makes so well. We brought together this incredible dream team of folks to develop, and it's going to be very intentional. There's an information policy primary person there, there's an instructional designer there, there's an accessibility specialist there, there's our superstar Tanya, the program manager, and things that should be happening and done. Talking about things forever. Um, and we also want to acknowledge the funding for these two amazing library services and said, this sounds like a team model. Here are some financial resources to bring this team together and also to make it free. So this is like, why does it let them sign up and try it out and see if they can have to pay money for this? I could talk about the nuances of creating this program and like how do we set up the campaigns and what was the learning outcomes and that sort of thing. And I've done that in the past. There's a very nice video about the building of it. So for now, it's probably fair enough to say that a lot of, a lot of excited people got together and developed this thing called the Certificate of Information Practices. We launched our call, and the first thing we said a lot, I think that was making most of the time, was the idea that this wasn't about one person doing something else, but it's something that we can do as a team. Here's a page test. <laughs> anyway, what we asked for people was if you want to participate in this program, do you need any experience with being a subject service, a subject expert, and a design expert? Like and the idea that nobody can do this on their own. Two of our co PIs then seem to have had that experience. Then seem to be a librarian and have some sciences from her. And they have had that experience. <laughs> They would get up and talk science, and then Lindsay would say, This is how Creative Commons licenses work. This is what openness means and accessibility means. And we think that's a really successful way to do this in the community in that way. So we invited it, and we said, You need to apply as a pair. I'm a little bit anxious. That's a big ask. If I'm a lone librarian in my institution trying to get an educated program student, asking a faculty member, Can you come and spend two semesters to take out the stuff with me and change your whole course? That's a big ask. About that. The good news though is we had um, 30 slots for 15 pairs and we got about triple the number of applicants that we had come with. So we were super duper excited about the idea that people might want to try this for us. We were excited. That gave us the privilege of being pretty choosy about who we included. And something we said from the beginning is we don't want all big, wealthy, famous institutions. We don't want all Institutions in one small part of the country. We don't want all humanists or all scientists or all social scientists or whatever. So, uh, the University of Virginia has, you know, is pretty well endowed and well supported. The college is doing really awesome, cutting each things moving forward. 
And you can see we've got fashion design, we've got general psychology, we've got principles of genetics, we've got here's the other, the other side called psychology and the law, lawyer, right? Um, public speaking business application really ran the gamut. So the idea of talking about this thing is developing And we're gonna share our ideas disciplines <laughs> in really different institutional contexts, identities and all that stuff. Really, really exciting. This part of the big secret sauce, but I was successful. Super awesome. So, those are the people we brought into the program. What we asked them to do was to take a semester in the fall to do some online training. So, we started with by laying a foundation. So, the hallmark of anything about that stuff means it's a theology. When we talk about it, this is the thing that I did in your special system. We spent a fair amount of time talking about those critical considerations of inclusion, equity, and those sorts of things. And then the last bit is the how. And this is sort of the culminating piece. The main thing we asked them to do, other than just sort of get up to speed on this, was to develop an action. Say, I told you I want to change my psychology in the law course. I don't really know what that looks like because I don't know what the pedagogy does, but I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to learn what a pedagogy is, and I'm going to learn about the why and the way we do it. It's a we talk about, and I'm going to develop, develop a plan for actually changing the course. At the end of the semester, I'm going to have the syllabus that I'm going to do the assignments, everything else ready to go. And I know on the first day, the instructor is going to speak, and on the second day, the librarians can come and find this information. So people really finish this semester ready to hit the ground and go. And that made the first thing we did in spring super exciting, which is we invited everybody to come together for our students. We said, everybody who has these grants, Come and share them not with just with your partner, but not just with your small partner, but with everybody who's participating. So this was really incredible. People love the experience of sharing what they're doing. They got affirmation, cool ideas to add. They got some, hey, I tried that a couple years ago. Watch out for this piece as well. That was really powerful for one of them as well. They also got that much they're like, oh shit. Um, but so this. This sort of gut check, this opportunity to brag about the good work you've done, is maybe tidy up any corners that maybe a little bit more tidy and really get ready to the spring semester. It's really, really, I think, certainly valuable to me. I've heard uh, responses and user evaluations that are super valuable to that as well. Which is why we need to find out. As we speak, all of those people that I show you are currently teaching their updated courses. We check one up with them on the regular. Um, scheduling some more formal check ins now and then at the end of the semester as well. And it's been really, really cool to see the work that's been done. We've got these great teams going out, teaching in a new way, trying new things out, um, having great successes, falling on their faces every now and again, and learning from that as well. And in fact, um, coincidentally, I'm sure. You have an education mark, uh, you have an education network share this great blog post about one parent in particular that happens in the population. Um, this is a really nice example of the link to the paper that I've been up to. Um, really, really exciting and talented. I mean, it's supposed to save you students a ton of money in uh, creating some new renewal of assignments that can be inspirational for students. They had some, some uh, uh, successes at some of I need to explain that a little bit better uh, tips as well. Um, this is one of the 15 teams that's out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I see we only have a, about seven minutes, so I have to be out here, so I want to make sure there's some time for QA. So, very quickly, a couple of lessons learned, and I'm going to shut down these a little bit more fast as well. Uh, quickly, lessons learned. Um, I keep using that community word over and over, that's because we really, really must be in the feedback. Um, we started from a team that was doing some research and brought together a bigger team. Smart people's development. Um, we invited people to come in as teams and join the communities as well. We might want to continue some of those partnerships. We saw a lot of value in casual communities. I mentioned the group, which was a big success. Um, but also, we had a couple of, of unstructured synchronous meetups. The students have told us some evaluations from our long work. So, we want to continue this. It's been really cool to see. Um, I've never done a lot about language framework, but having that central touchstone and like organizing the framework is easy working on this to um, something I always talk about with the community is meeting people where they are. There is no one size fits all. It's not one size fits all thing. Um, so chemists have been doing different 
be the psychologist, historians, um, and then that cross pollination research circle. So that we have conversations. Next steps, we're currently recruiting for state awards, so we can stay in Sunday, which I just know, reach out for The OEN has invested quality and generous things to as well in developing these learning circles, including one around pedagogy events, and a really nice week from now. The current cohorts that exist for our so that's why we're the OEN. There's this new open pedagogy pathway that is in the absolute night work in different ways. Um, and there's a repository that's going to share all these articles open so everybody else can work on stuff. So that's a whole heck of a lot of me talking. Let's let me not talk for a minute. What did I say too fast? What did I say that got too excited or confused or angry? What do you think? Of course, it's not a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I, I was just wondering, did you have any to inspire you to go to the module as a general postgraduate at the current practice going with educators? I love that idea. You're talking about my dreams now. So yeah, so like maybe it's really wonderful to do. Um, I, we have a school of education on my campus, to speak from my perspective. Somebody else in the room also. <laughs> it's probably about them too. Um, I'm working in the day with the Hey, buddy. I just said, I just said, I'm super glad you're here. Um, so, yeah, this is this is a conversation we have a lot um, because I sit in library land. I get paid for that work, but I'm demanding that work. So, it seems really, really um, that's a great idea. I should take it back to my own organization as well. Um, but, particularly in education students, they have a practice sense. Education to be well, I thought it is. This is the same conversation with me on the same things. Is that a good textbook? I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I can tell you it's five stars in the open textbook library. I can tell you these 10 institutions use them like it. I don't want to be using it. So I recommend it. I want to support it. I love to see it. It's gotten amazing. I wish I could also do this. It's mandated to pass tests. I don't know. 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 Has anybody else had success in that space? Um, getting this into more regularized way? I've not had, it's always brilliant to see these programs. And excuse me, I came in a wee bit late, but I mean, right away I thought, I should have been here in time because what you're doing is great. Yeah. It's, it's about faculty engagement. We've got lots of these things, you know, and then, you know, I mean, we got all get, get really excited about it. And then we think, oh, we'll be overwhelmed with, and then we get like two people come along. So, how have you incentivized, or what, what have you done to get to get them to come along and, and, and switch on? Yeah, that, that's a good question, and that's another one that a lot of folks need to advance. I'll say we have been very much a coalition of willing to support. I'm, I'm not here to force anybody to do anything. That's not our business. I think these are really cool ideas. I think these ideas that we were a psychologist, but our chief Chiang has been doing it. You know, like you know, Robin's been out to do it. Surely, the models I can make it easy to try it out. How can you think about sort of spinning the sometimes perceived straw of this work in the old that notion of tenure recognized practices by conference or by you know, publishing it somewhere? Like I, what I can do is open the door and lay out the red carpet and put a, you know, you can put a bag of money on the inside of the door or something like that. But at the end of the day, um, if, if they want to be there, I hope they'll be there. And if not, they won't be. And I'll say, everybody I've talked to who has been there, I think um, they didn't come in for the money, for sure. They came in because they devoted their life to being a psychologist. And they said, like, I want to do psychology. I want to do psychology better. I want to do psychology in a way that's going to use my lived experiences and my expertise in the right way. My psychology. So um, it's, it's been about enthusiasm and the success of the lives. Other comments on that or other questions? Are your applicants just confined to the US or would you have the option of possibly? Do you think that? Say, uh, you say it's free, so yeah. uh, if it's versus Niger, I also. Uh, um, I can't speak to the Open Education Network's policy on the certificate itself. I will say that a lot of the training programs are side down in the US. Um, and some of the other types 
all about the cost of ownership. Our initial program was funded by the U.S. Institute of Lender Services. So they may have a specific set of considerations that they need to consider. Um, but as the program becomes sort of, sort of takes flight and becomes sustainable at the NASA, I think there's a lot of people who say too much about the program. Any questions? So I think we're about at time. I really want to be conscious of the other questions. So if you have other questions, I'm around. I'm super happy to talk about this stuff. So are you asking because I'll talk to you later on. But I really appreciate it. Widening participation as a concept that's very familiar in our elsewhere, and I'm building on that concept. Um, the open online engagement and our mentor sharing a framework for creating meaningful opportunities. So, the research problem that I started with this is my um, PhD research, and in my thesis last week, I was Waiting to find out when the Bible um, There are almost 90 million displaced people in the world. So I was interested in how refugees and asylum seekers engage in online learning. And we know that only approximately 60% of those are actually enrolled in primary education versus the global average of around 40%. And there's kind of an intuitive this this as well online. But we do know there is evidence to say that uh, most of these asylum students do participate, especially in the groups that are part of the open online. Their retention rates are probably even lower than the months of the general population. So, my research purpose was to identify the enablers and constraints of displaced women's engagement in online children. So the higher education institutions find the purpose of what the students and students retention. I'm using the definition of student engagement that comes from Mel Bond and et al. And they um, a few years ago they did a systematic review of the literature on online engagement in the field of education technology or linked to educational technology. So I can't synchronize to it. But um, it's a helpful definition because it includes the four dimensions that we use in discussions of students' engagement online or offline. Those are behavioral, emotional, social, and cognitive. Um, and what I love about this definition is the fact that it is a The more students are engaged and empowered in their own lives, the more likely they are to channel that energy back into. And that fuel And I thought, well, I wonder how that actually happens in practice. So the research setting was at the University of Western which was the first university, to my knowledge, in the UK to offer online scientific scholarships. And some of you might have had a period um, project to get here to about scientific scholarships at the University um, uh, Dublin City University. It's a very familiar concept. But generally, scientific scholarships are offered to students who are local to the university, and they have to tick a, a box of a, a government loan office to say that they have the right to be a new university. So, a distance from this function means it's going to be anybody, including people in the country, who are assigned to students, get them to the right to. So I came from a methodology, and first of all, I took the example from that place to the university, which is where I'm doing the PhD, and the university first place to me was. It was a small quantitative place to me. I had um, 10 research participants. I hoped for 10, and I got 10. So a few responses to my request for participation. So it was a convenience um, sample 
there were probably about 30 at the time. Um, I think specifically structured intervals with each of them, and that took place between the five times of the one. Uh, and then I did a flexible analysis of that. But I also did quite a substantial amount of numerous analysis. And the part one of the show was um, based on that numerous analysis. So, very quickly, I'm not going to go through this in much detail, but these were my ten central stars. They were located in different parts of the world. And for the purposes of following along this day, you see they're divided into five comic groups. The top and up. Top five have graduated, and they graduated some of them against the political arts at the time of the students in the winter. There was another who was in the UK, had her um, signing application, who finished the second time in the UK, and so on. But they graduated from the chess. Then there's Sammy, who um, had to exit the program halfway. Postgraduate um, post because his academic initials not believed strong enough to manage the dissertation one year. It's also a way that he was um, so partially Teresa and Sol both withdrew very early on. Teresa left the program after part of the first module. Because she lost the classroom. I'll come back to this if anyone's interested. But that was the last straw. I was talking about that because she had not been that person. Soul withdrew without a starting start. He experienced severe trauma just before he was due to start. And uh, it, it disabled him from his studies. He's now being a community of the city. He enjoyed the last time. My research questions, I wish I could talk to you about all of them today because this is the stuff but questions one and two, um, I can talk about elsewhere. Um, in fact, you know, so being at my session last year, I worked with the big bug, it's like what factors can be for strains and response to the children. How do you spell as descriptions of their online learning and constructs of the online patient? You'll get a sense of so I'm going to focus particularly on the question of the What are the incidents and the opinion scholars about the incident engagement and how does engagement fuel further engagement in this context? Um, I'm using an online engagement framework from a group of Australian authors to translate the knowledge read in detail and made the literature review. And identify these five elements. You remember I mentioned there were generally four dimensions in literature. They separated out social and economics. I used to be a couple of there, which if you were sharp enough, you have to put the slides again. But basically, it's behavioral, emotional, and social economics. And that's next to each one, they came up with a number of indicators that we use. And they were illustrated. <laughs> You might remember that my research question for me was about what are the capabilities of that students' engagement. I'm using capabilities that are rather specific sense of the way. Some of you might be familiar with the capabilities of the country. First, I'm not just in the minds of the same sense. He was, is an economist um, and philosopher, and this was part of the debate about human rights and equity that was starting in the 70s, and he was saying a lot of things. Um, it's not enough just access to equal access to resources. It doesn't, um, you know, need to be participation. Equity is a um, And the tool that he used was the concept of It's being freedom to do the wrong What one as an individual has reason to value to be and in Sen's um, concept, he saw public deliberation and negotiation in society 
that's the way of finding out what are the things that can produce the values to and how can we in our society better be made for that? But I just found um joined in this analysis as well, and she's the other main source, one of the sources. Um, and she said, well, really what we need is to identify the core differences that every democratic government should have in its institution that are, you know, rights that are fundamentally protected. Uh, same as so, Martin's farm came up with these 10 competencies, which are still what we use for very many things. Um, and I'll just tell you a bit about the first few. So, the capabilities for knife is that we can use it to move a knife of, uh, you know, a decent knife of um, normal duration. It's not very really short. That trip happens in the lifetime. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but it's linked very much to bodily health and body integrity. It's not healthy, it's good. You know, living life and bodily integrity enables to move around freely without becoming so exhausted. And then she talked about senses, imagination, and thought. I mean, a high night that has uh, unfolded. Emotions, affiliation, these are the ones we're going to want to know about this. Um, I haven't got some interest from the first time. It's an interesting stuff. Around 2006, Melanie Walker, that's a lovely character, took up the most powers in the process and said, Well, what does this mean for higher education? What we can do is this need. To be able to affect the higher education. And in the South African context, especially in the region where she's in, uh, it's very, very unknown. Uh, extremely important. Students are coming to the West, um, you know, in, in quite dire provinces sometimes. Um, and so these questions are really relevant to the education students. She used um, this sort of uh, most balanced capabilities, which added the education aspects and not in the sense of the circulation of grids, although it includes the balanced capabilities, but also all these capabilities have both a personal effort to them and a social structural element. So, in terms of education resilience, it's being in the environment that's the main to navigate the difficulties in life. Focusing on your studies, for example. So, what I did, and here I am condensing months of work, and maybe it's important to do this to you <laughs> as I was presenting my presentation. But I came up with uh, a plan, I actually did a whole map of cases, and I'm starting to research about this round by the way. And that came out to think I and I found quite a neat amount of action, but it worked better when I combined social and collaborative engagement into one piece. And I thought that was reasonable for me to do because um, the literature was in place anyway. And actually, later when I worked in my session, um, that worked, it worked best, that would have been nice to be done to the social collaborative So. We're going to work with this model of the time we see science. But um, behavioral uh, engagement, um, I have to say, needing an understanding Emotional engagement is fairly obviously needing emotional health. Social engagement is the problem of recognition and Thank you so Mentioning um, Republic's justice earlier, and that's the greatest framework that was expressed in that was in problems of engagement and some knowledge and imagination. So I came up with this theoretical, almost like a hypothesis, while I was beginning to analyze my data. Well, let me see what my data says, what the basis of that. 
So what you can see now is a few quotes from my recent <coughs> and me trying to argue why I think they represent a certain kind of ancient, and then trying to argue further why I think that the false issues, why I'm the issues, and that's that's the answers. So Julia not his real name, lives um, in a refugee camp in Malawi, and he had the most Studies. And he said the program was about politics and international relations, which was a, a very um, personal subject for most of the negotiations. And what he enjoyed about this, of course, was trying to learn to negotiate. So in the refugee conference conference today, and he talks about a couple of things. And they came to the beach, so but I didn't think I could see how it was on the top. And then he's very involved in the church, and he's just a very to they ask him. So he, as a uh, age wise, a young man in that community, he's part of the elders now, he's involved in the help of the souls in the community. Um, and I put that down as a paper on the because it was an indicator that application was not ready for the it's our uh, examination plan. And I saw some parallels in He was navigated to study work in life. You know, he was by buying and negotiating these things that he received to do what to do that he did what other things And responses to the educational opportunities, because it's actually an educational adapted strengths. Um, so, so I'm saying that um, this is an, just an example <coughs> In terms of emotional engagement, this was with Marion, who had to write a critical review about an article, which is on a paradox of critical violence. She said it had a lot of critical terms, and she must for English friends this all And I said to her, no, I don't want to do that. And she said, I managed to get to a piece of it. And she was surprised. She said, you demonstrated some points and comments. And she said, this to me, I've got to more comments. Now, this is just one of many of the quotes from Marion, but there was almost an emotional thread running through everything um, that Marion was saying. She approached them as very emotional. So I found an emotional. Uh, and I can imagine it's more like a couple of images as well. It's not actually a traditional resilience, maybe it's a of, and we'll see when it all comes together. Um, that it comes different um, examples at different points in the model when it comes to people. So, emotional health, this is partly working for my own perspective. Students are able to experience emotions and keep the positive experience. They're not subject to anxiety or fear, And actually, Maria was the person who was subject to a lot of anxiety during the studies of which she was one of the society in which she was rejected. But she navigated the world and was part of the relationship. Social and collaborative engagements. This example of Teresa is the one who sadly dropped out of the spiral. And she, running through her award transcript, was a social. She was highly motivated by the discussion of the group. That was the only thing that she was in some way. And she said, that was very, very helpful because I see that I'm um, other human beings, other people, my fellow students. I enjoy the only thing I said, you know, I like it so much. And I also post because this is my own way of understanding when I think of it, it's my own and I love it. It's very strong. I forgot to mention that my all these beautiful images are from the world. The family said, sorry, Francis, to me, take bar, but some of you So, in terms of affiliation and recognition, again, 
actually in the bottom of the box. So my student is not able to introduce the continuous and Spanish Asian relationships, mutual respect, recognition, and trust to interact with others to learn new knowledge and solve problems. Now, quite often when we talk about social learning, we talk about the same problems. Oh, yeah, it's not interesting to learn new knowledge and solve problems. And then when other students continue to do learning design, they say, okay, how do we get our students to teach them new knowledge and solve problems? But actually, the first part of this is, is a social thing. It's beyond the power of an individual to control to some extent, to the right extent, you know, how much mutual information is being created. Um, how many of you So, I think So, this is the first engagement that I actually published. And this is generally the one that I've done extensive programs with this. Uh, I think that's current students when I have them demonstrated their problems. So, this is Nadia from Afghanistan. And actually, running through her, it was very, very interesting how to take these um, quotes because they seem to demonstrate something. There's some other quotes. I'm going to each one seems to have a sort of meaning in one sports one dimension, but obviously, there wasn't enough. Meant just interesting. Uh, and that is that, um, so she came from a dance town in Baltimore, the Oxford River, um, that her father had had to part of his life and they stayed on that way. And he came to a lot of those problems. And she said, learning what's being published in the past two years, we gave two sides of the world. Before studying the smart drive, I said, don't be fine, it's a customer. Now I've tried to stop the habit of being lost. I'm trying to switch over my sight to knowing the opinions of other people and the rhymes of the source of my opinions. And this was, and she went on then to say that she needed to know which knowledge was the appropriate knowledge to demonstrate in which context. Then she should be um, aware of things she was trying to do discussion for her own. And the way I options to do to be um really fun to as well. Uh that different knowledge and different discourse was needed. And um and I thought that was really interesting because it showed how close you need to meet cognitive engagement speaks with um social engagement and that whole concept of knowledge and knowledge. So I've mapped this part of this as well. This one again. Students are able to use imagination to accomplish this place, use academic and professional ones of value to oneself and others, to be an active inquirer without fear of replies on the decision. Now we tend to think, you know, oh, our discussion forums are safe places, students will know that. Um, and maybe we put a resource set of months to be with the final activity study. But what I have from my students. From, from my research was that there was often a lot of thought going into what they were thinking to post up there. What would people think of them if they posted something that, you know, look just like they were saying the wrong thing or giving the wrong words or um, who? And then you, so quite often they were censoring themselves, sort of made gap, um, come back to this. So this comes back to the question of how does engagement fuel engagement? And I'm going to go through this part of us and what we can do to collaborate with the development of the link of the audience. She can't uncall them from the engagement process. But it was fueling them, perhaps fueled by an emotional sense. Well, it was fueling these emotional engagements in. It was fueling a social engagement with this community around what he was learning, and it was fueling this cognitive engagement. Example of emotional engagement, sorry, I'm going to do an assignment. Um, so she approached the question and she got emotional validation for what he was going to do. But that emotional engagement 
sent her back to keep she was fine now to be translated into um, you know, took a lot of problems. Um, and that was obviously the social image of what a parent of the Uh and then the social image and how they feel about the situation. So my sense of the reason you um out was I thought it had been some way for me to keep coming up to discussions that she couldn't she got to the with. But she had just been recent for country strikes. She was already disabled, so start change from um she had two reasons and she unposed it so she had so much to tell and then she lost her password. And I had the sense for much of the she could only going back to the discussion for her and engaging with the peers, she would have some kind of other issues at that time. So, cognitive engagement is one of the things we can do. So, what we end up with is, is not the final question, by the way. Um, but these are as going pretty much from everywhere to everywhere else. And technically, I um, argue that each act of engagement is fueling the capability of the other acts. Um, I might be too far in that clip, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And that means we can fuel each other. I was like a pinwheel and ring where all the things merge and go on. You can tell which is. Um, so just to, to finish the model of this um, fancy So underneath these factors, so you'll remember my first then I'm going to be and I just brought the rest of this. And to no stars in science, health, bodily research, and I'm control of the environment. And I put them in the center of the Actually, to have something out of stem. And it's kind of survival that And we don't always think that, you know, of these things in terms of our students, but actually, there has been quite a lot of time for students in the university to stay for the students. So, that was part of the something that was the problem. And if most people are in the place, then it's going to be very difficult for students to actually. The other two things. And then right So then, in terms of practice, going back to trust and my my suggestion for what patients will practice is to foster not the engagement so much as the self, but the abilities that the people pose for that patients. So, it's to ask ourselves these questions. For educational resilience, how can we open up these open computers, create an environment that empowers students to navigate study work online, which increases their academic responsibility to what the users and constraints? And for emotional health, how can we open up to create an environment that empowers students to experience positive emotions? Or emotions that contribute to us to learning, not being subject to anxiety and so much to make sure something while knowing that many of our students do actually um, experience those challenges. Affiliation and recognition, I think there's so much we can do here in terms of systemic, well, epistemic justice and justice between my cognitive engagement. That those space which are in space, creating an environment that empowers students to be treated with dignity, that change in education, respect for education, trust, etc. Pedagogy is the parents. And then it's the production of education. This is where I think it's important to have this justice. Thank you.